Takua! Happy Bionicle Day everyone, and welcome back to Bionicle Direct. I'm Chip, and I'll again be your host as we highlight some of the coolest projects your fellow fans are developing. Let's begin with Lightstone Studios, the developers behind Bionicle Quest for the Masks Recharged. This year, they're releasing their latest expansion pack for Recharged, Rising Shadows, Hidden Light. Want to see if you can take on the Rakshi yourself? Rising Shadows Hidden Light will be releasing on the Steam Workshop this fall. Just open up the page for Tabletop Simulator and search Quest for the Masks. After years of work bringing their vision to life, Team Kanoe is almost ready to share Bionicle Masks of Power with the world. Let's take a look at their upcoming demo release now. New from Team Kanoe. Starts dying down. Is it true that there's a place for you when the sun burns out? Don't you fear that it's too late to turn the tide? These machines were never built to make things right.
you can keep up with the latest on Masks of Power, the demo for which will be coming to Steam early next year, by following at Masks of Power on Twitter, or visiting MasksofPower.com. Next up, we've got a new look at Kanoe Clash, an exciting bionicle fighting game in development by Bell Games. Let's see what Bell's been cooking up. This is Bell of Bell Games, lead developer of Bionicle Kanohi Clash. Today, I'd like to talk about where the game's currently at and where it's going in the future. Earlier this June, I released version 0.3 of Kanohi Clash, which marked a big change. I finally switched the project off of the old Mugen engine and onto its newer open source equivalent, Ikemen Go. What this means going forward is that I have access to tons of new features I couldn't have dreamed of before. Following on that, I'd like to announce that I'm beginning official rollback tests soon. Keep your eyes on the Bell Games Twitter for an announcement. So I'm sure a lot of you who are already following the project are wondering where it'll go from here. Unfortunately, my work schedule is pretty inconsistent, so I can't say for sure, but I can tell you that my roadmap looks something like this? Yeah, sure. Some of you may already be familiar, but I've started a wiki over on Mizumi for Bionicle Kanohi Clash. Here you'll be able to find frame data, hitboxes, combos, strategies, and all kinds of other things. But I'm still working on it. And speaking of still working on it, I'd like to show off some brief footage of Onua before I close this out. Onua will be added in version 0.4 alongside a whole host of other gameplay changes. I'd like to thank 810 for hosting this event and letting me be a part of it. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you soon. Kanoe Clash can be found on the Bell Games website, bellgames.net slash bionicle. The latest development build is available now, so please give it a try. Original Bionicle games aren't the only projects we highlight on the Bionicle Direct. We also love to show off the latest mods the community has created. Let's take a look at what Ontocron has been working on with Minog.
the Minarg Improvement mod can be downloaded from the BZ Power link in the description, and the original game can be downloaded from the Biomedia project. In addition to the Minarg Improvement mod, community members Jalagai and Kangwin have been working on a mod pack for Minarg 2, which includes several lost files recently recovered by the Myths and Legacy team. Check it out using the link in the description. Our penultimate gaming project for this year's Direct is Quest for the Masks Cube, a new take on the classic Bionicle card game. Let's see what Tyker, Cube's developer, has been working on. Version 1.0 of Quest for the Masks Cube will be available later today on the Steam Workshop page for Tabletop Simulator. Hey yo, Bonk Alerts! My name is Tarker, and I'm the producer of this little project that I will be talking about today. The project is called Quest for the Mask Cube, or QFDM Cube for short. So me, Metroid Wave, Niara Ghost, and Hard Believer are going to play a game after this event, which you can catch here if you are interested in seeing this thing more in depth. We will be playing the cube in the Rai Challenge configuration. What does that mean? Well, it means that all players will have access to Rai Challenge expansion cards, and that the game action card availability will vary more than normal from a regular cube draft. If you are new to Cube and Quest for the Mask, we recommend the basic configuration. Now, how does the draft process work? It's simple, really. At the same time, each player opens their first pack. Everyone has to open the same type of packs, and all packs of that type will be needed to be drafted before moving over to the next pack type. To draft a card from this first pack, each player will be picking one of the cards from their packs, and then passing it along to the next player on their right. From the pack each player just received, they pick a second card and pass that pack again to the right. This process continues in this manner until all cards from the first packs have been picked. Each player then opens their second pack and does the same as with the first packs, but passes to the left instead. For every other pack you switch direction between right and left. Once all cards have been distributed, you build your decks for the cards you drafted. When everyone's decks are ready, you can all play 1v1 matches, a multiplayer game or a tournament to see who is the ultimate mask gatherer. If you don't have enough friends, you can also play this queue with two players. This game mode is called Seed, and instead of choosing cards one by one, you build decks only from the cards from the packs you were given, and you do get out some nice 1v1 matches. By finding the right play mode for your playgroup, it can help you have more fun playing with the queue. So it's time to reach for your favorite Toa and create some spicy, never before seen decks that will maximize your mass gathering capabilities. Simply search for QFTM Cube under the Steam Workshop tab for Tabletop Simulator. With that said, uh, this has been all from me today. I hope you all have a great rest of your 8 10 celebration and have to try this new game format out. Version 1.0 of Quest for the Masks Cube will be available later today on the Steam Workshop page for Tabletop Simulator. Be sure to give it a try! For our final gaming project for this year's Direct, we've got something new from Hexadecimal Mantis, developer of the ambitious BTGM mod for Bionicle the Game. We've restored a lost player character, which can now be activated using a standalone mod. Let's take a look!
This Onua Matter mod is available now on ModDB, so if you'd like to play Bionicle the game as everyone's favourite Toa of Earth, now's your chance to do so. Just search for Onua Matter add-on. This year, Bionicle Direct is expanding to feature several non-gaming projects, the first of which is the latest Coley Heads release from Swert of BS01. Let's see what Mask of Brick has in store for us. Instructions for the new Coley Heads are now available for download on Bionicle Sector 01, with more coming this October. If you've got space on your shelf, check them out! Community member Iconic Stills has been releasing weekly Bionicle art since January, and is finally ready to show you what it's all been leading up to. The complete art book is available for free at at CStillsI on Twitter, with print options also available. Remember to post Bio Raffle in the chat to be entered to win a physical copy of Iconic Stills' beautiful art book, along with complete Takanuva and Makuta sets, courtesy of Nyara Ghost. Last year, Pokoro Morgan released Swarm, a Bionicle 2002 fanzine. This year, Morgan and her team are back with the 2003-themed Bionicle Illustrated fanzine. Let's take a peek at what's inside. Hi, I'm Morgan, 
And if you're like me, growing up you were probably obsessed with The Legend of the Bionicle. What I loved most about this series was the sense of wonder you could experience when interacting with its many different media. Colorful robots uh, with elemental powers fighting evil and going on quests to save the world on a strange uh, tropical island with tribal robots. The story was told in so many fragments across so many different mediums, but to me, none stack up more than the phenomenal comics published by DC Comics. They provided brief but enchanting views into this bizarre world and employed a variety of phenomenal illustrators with many different art styles that really opened my eyes up to both comics as an art form and a storytelling medium. 20 years later, the Bionicle community is still going strong, building mocks and new characters, designing masks, and continuing the story where things left off. The legend belongs to us now, and I'm so happy to be a part of this great community. But in the back of my mind, something was lacking. Something I couldn't put my finger on. And then I realized, no new comics. So I set out to change that with Bionicle Illustrated, a series of fanzines by the community, for the community, and I have had the immense pleasure of being able to work with so many talented artists and writers uh, over the past year or so to put out four different fanzines, starting out with Swarm, uh, a Bionicle 2002 fanzine, Invasion of the Throwbots chapters 1 and 2, and Dark Hunters Drawn Daily, uh, a kind of an Inktober uh, collection of drawings I did. And uh, we have two more on the way, and they are just so much fun to read. And I think they capture a little something of, you know, the old Lego magazines, you know. We include building instructions for mocks. Uh, we include uh, building contests if you want to submit uh, characters and mocks you build. Uh, and yeah, there's a tons of ways to get involved. If you want to get involved yourself, feel free to reach out to me. Or we accept all people in the community. I want this fanzine to be a gathering place for people that, you know, want to express their love of Bionicle uh, visually and, you know, through the written word. So if you're interested uh, and want to check this out, just head on over to my Gumroad and pick up your copy of Bionicle Illustrated today. Thanks. Bionicle Illustrated is available now on Morgan's Gumroad, which you can access using the link in the description. Last year, community member Milkblade released Bionicle Kami, a fan comic made entirely in Bricklink's studio program. Today, Milkblade is taking us behind the scenes, showing us how Kami came to be. Hello and happy 810, everybody. I am Milkblade. Some of you might know me from the Bionicle speedrun community as a world record speedrunner of Bionicle the game, but that's not what I'm here for today. For A10 this year, I'm showing off a new Bionicle project I've been working on for a little while now, Bionicle Kami. Bionicle Kami is a webcomic set on Spheris Magna 300 years after the end of the original G1 of Bionicle. The protagonist, Kura, is currently on a journey to find and unite his Toa team, whoever and wherever they might be. Today, I'd like to show off some of the behind the scenes of how the comic is made, as well as why some design choices are the way they are. Starting off, let's take a look at our main character here, Kura, the Toa Kami of Ice. I've taken a lot of inspiration from, from a few mythologies, primarily Japanese mythology, when creating characters, hence Bionicle Kami, given Kami is a word for God and the nature of this story has references to divinity. For the Toa Kami, I've derived their names from certain gods within the Japanese pantheon, Kura is a close derivative of a god of snow. 
And Kura also being the first mock I've ever made obviously takes inspiration from the 2006 era of Bionicle. I chose the Kanohi Calyx, or Mask of Fate for him, as it's a simple yet effective enough protagonist power, and it's my favorite mask in Bionicle. <laughs> Given his prominent status in the series so far, I recommend reading if you'd like to see and learn a bit more about our blunt, combat-loving hero, Kura. Continuing the named characters, we've got the secondary antagonist of the first minor arc, Bullet. Naming schemes are a big thing I've picked up, and the scroll overall for me are named after firearm-related things, such as Bullet, Magnum, Revol, etc. Bullet's design is a slight break from my standard scroll, as I wanted him to be unique, but not totally separate from his fellow warriors. Following Bullet is our primary antagonist of this arc, Magnum. A totally unique scrawl build. I wanted him to have a bigger, badder look to him, as he's not a normal scrawl in the slightest. I'm particularly proud of the leg design, which uses Hordika torsos as thigh pieces. And what made this tyrant chief into such an unnatural monster? Well, you'll have to wait and see. Moving on to more backstock-oriented characters, these are the Matoran forms currently being used as NPCs, and a few legitimately important characters. While there is a level of conveyor beltness to background characters, the simple switching of masks, colors, and having a few basic builds to mix things up with makes it a lot more diverse visually. What I do mostly conveyor belt is the standard style of builds like the ones I use for Bone Hunters, Scrawl, and Agori. Something a bit more clone set oriented I can populate a background with or have charge into battle and get tossed around en masse. And speaking of backgrounds, here is a look at what a setting is like from a non-panel or page perspective. As the whole comic is done in the studio program, I create environments piece by piece and use some theatrical maneuvers to get shots where you don't see the glitches or holes that may have been missed in the rendering process. Recently, I've also begun creating dynamic backgrounds using a perspective trick as well, which makes things a lot more visually pleasing. Now, I'll move a bit quickly through these, but I do want to show off the finished product a bit with a few pages and panels from the currently released chapters. Plus, you get a glimpse of the story in a few chunks, which, well, early on, now I'm proud of the narrative I've crafted, even in this introductory first arc. Finally, I'd like to close out by teasing some upcoming characters and members of the Toa Kami. The first member you'll be seeing to join the team is Kagat, the Toa Kami of Fire. Kagat is a daredevil with surprising book smarts, but a snag in his combat style which lacks creativity. One thing to note with the Toa Kami, I've designed them all to be very different from one another. No build is the same, as they all have a different mental image and perception of what a Toa is and what it means to be one. And finally, my last teaser for you is Hachim, the Toakami of Stone. While Hachim is a ways away from making his debut, I wanted to show him off as he's one of the more odd builds of the Toakami, and I love it. This is also the first instance of an original mask I've made, the Kanohi Kakucho, the Great Mask of Expansion. Similar in concept to the Mask of Growth, However, it affects individual limbs and can be used to temporarily infuse some objects with expanding power as well. But that is all the time I've got for you today. I'll be in chat to answer any questions, and I'm always happy to talk about Bionicle Kami on my own stream, where I sometimes work on the comic live for people to watch. Be sure to check out Bionicle Kami on Webtoons, and I'd like to give a massive thanks to Vakiti and everyone behind this year's A10 for having me. Have a wonderful Bionicle Day, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy. Keep your stick on the ice. The first five chapters of Bionicle Kami can be found on Webtoon Canvas. Be sure to follow at Milkblade on Twitter to keep up with what's coming next. Thanks for tuning in to our third annual Bionicle Direct. We hope you enjoy the rest of the 810 festivities.